Good day, friends. Welcome to day 21 of Mermaid 2024. A little bit uh, scruffy today. I've been doing housework. Just never seems to end, does it? I've been a little bit better with uh, keeping on top of a certain chores, but they're just the ones that you just don't like to do very often. Dishes is one of those things for us. Um, we don't have a big storage. There's not so much storage in this entire apartment, really, but especially in the kitchen, we had to actually buy a wire rack for all of our groceries because there was just not enough place to store everything. And then the reason I don't like doing the dishes is because where all the plates and the glasses and all of that is stored is just an annoying part of the kitchen to get into. So I generally just like to put them in the dishwasher and get them from there, which is not great. I don't, I feel like that's a lazy thing to do. So I'm just doing that right now. May or may not get around to undoing, undoing, unpacking all the laundry. Might clean a bathroom today. Not quite sure. These all sound like very fun things for future me to worry about. Right now, I've got to get to my three weeks in for Mermaid. I finished today as well. Uh, not the videos. Obviously, those will be going until the end of the month. But I finished every single Mermaid video, filming, like the actual doing of it, um, until the 31st. So pending we can still keep these voiceovers going, you'll be able to see a whole month of these mermaid videos and I feel very good about that, very accomplished, but I will not count my chickens until they've hatched, so keep an eye out for the rest of the videos. Today's mermaid is um, pretty simple, a pencil sketch based off of, sorry, I, this is me on the floor, I just wanted to grab, <laughs> a pencil sketch based off of the sticker that I put in there from Collage Club, it was I think a long time ago I was doing like what if Tim Burton did Mermaid and some drawings from that kind of stimula uh, stimulated, inspired uh, other drawings, which then inspired other drawings. And then I came, I, I came to do this one piece that is just really weird. And then I did derivatives of that. And then one of them was in Collage Club. So I used that sticker and now I'm making a derivative of that, but essentially kind of taking it out of the weird ooky kooky spooky Tim Burton area and bringing it into more of a like cute kind of aesthetic. Uh, making it just a little bit more, a little bit more art journal girl, whimsical style, if you will. A little unbothered still. I, I think she's cute. I like how she turned out. Very simple sketch, but I was just more concentrating on uh, getting the proportions right and also simplifying in a way that I felt like was really neat and clean. A lot of the time when I do something really simple, I, I struggle to actually not go too far with it. That is my challenge. And then also a lot of the time when I draw, I don't tend to clean things up. I do here and there, like I'll fix little things or I'll change little things, but as far as actually making really neat line work, that really does seem to be a thing of the past for me. I'm not quite sure if that'll ever come back. Even when I do intentionally try to clean up line work and have like, you know, really neat lines, I still don't do a very good a job of it. Like if you look looking closely, it's really messy and I don't mind it, but I do sometimes wonder uh, how people perceive it if they just think I'm a lazy artist because <laughs> you could absolutely think that and it would be true I, I just don't have the desire I would say patience but I do have a lot of patience to do art a lot of the time like I will spend a lot of time on it I do have the skill to be able to do it I just don't have the desire and that's one of those things that in art journaling I really allow myself to have is to lean into whatever I feel like I want to do you know lead with that desire that passion and then go from there so I guess for a period of a few years, I haven't worried about uh, really clean line work. Now that I say that, I think those final pieces I did for the Daisy style workshop I did last year, I think some of those were very clean. I do have some examples of very clean work, um, but also in this journal in particular, it's so throw it all in there. The pages bleed through, there's, you know, pieces of the pages missing and tore off, there's, you know, it's all crinkled from where I've done water media. It's just so kind of messy feeling anyway that I really don't care uh, too much to create very, very clean, pristine work in there. And for the pieces that you still have left to see, let me grab my journal actually. I'll, uh, I'll see what's in store for you in the next few days. Oh, people were asking about the pencils that I had for this piece. It's not showing up. This camp the, uh, the colors on that just looked really weird. Um, the pieces on that were the pencils Faber-Castell Polychromos. The most that I use are Holbein Artist colored pencils. They're very, very smooth and creamy. And then also the Caran d'Ache Luminance pencils. I really love those as well. So those are in my pencil pouch 
that I tipped out and did all of that for. I've been doing some sketching inspired by Greg Barnes, who's fashion illustrations or like costume sketches, I should say. He's a costume designer, very, very famous costume designer, did costumes for the Rockettes, did costumes for pretty much everything uh, you've ever seen and loved. He did costumes for that very creative but his sketches are so like quintessential old school fashion sketches to me not from the 50s not you know dior type illustrations but there is a whole other section which i kind of classify as like 80s uh fashion sketches and there's such a specific look to it they're so angular they're so they're kind of draggish I, they really remind me of um the 80s but also like very specifically when i worked at royal caribbean we had in the old production studios, I've never been to the new ones, but in the old ones in Hollywood, Florida, there were sketches of costumes from different shows. And then there were also like set designs, just kind of decorated the hallways. You know, we were in the production studio and we were going to do all those shows. So sometimes we would see these old sketches um, and some of them were done, you know, in the late eighties and they just looked like that. There was just such a specific look to an eighties fashion sketch. So Greg Barnes does a lot of that. And I was, referencing those actually a lot of the hands that he was doing I was kind of learning some of that so I've added that into my last few days of mermaid we just did <laughs> I liked the comment that said that the one from yesterday looked like a melted cupcake that was funny oh I'll show you what I ended up putting Bianchi in there remember I told you I put Bianchi in there with the screaming face in the eclipse sun that's what that looks like and apparently there's a Coke Zero label in there as well. This journal is so full. Hopefully you've been seeing as I flip it before we start the videos, uh, just how full it's becoming. There was one or two days where I went real crazy and there was a lot of things that I added. So uh, it gets really exciting once you get to that point. I don't know what day it was though. It might be today. I don't know. I haven't seen this video yet. Uh, lots of photos. Oh, here's today's piece. Okay, so what's coming up after today? Oh, I love tomorrow's. Tomorrow's is great. Not gonna tell you what it is, <laughs> but it was another uh, inspired by a photo. Then another one was inspired by a photo reference. Loved that. Then we have the Zendaya one from the Met Gala. I already shared that on Instagram, but I do have the video for that. A very colorful piece after that. A very cute kind of Blythe doll piece after that. Very wild looking, crazy, sketchy, uh, very art journaly piece after that. Something much more sweet and mixed media -y kind of layers, all very monochromatic, the next one. A weird mishmash of sketches inspired by the Greg Barnes and the hands that I was learning. Uh, after that, very beautiful, soft, kind of serene pencil piece after that. And then my very final piece is just very mixed media. And I pulled inspiration from uh, something I did earlier on in the journal, which you'll probably see towards the end. I've been working on the other stuff in the journal, you know, in between filming these videos that I, I do. And then some of the things that I've done, I've, I've really liked. So I've tried to recreate them for the days. So like the bubbles, the mermaids in the bubbles, I tried to do those. And to varying degrees of success, I feel like sometimes the original is just always better than the recreation. But yeah, there were just some ideas that I had. One in particular was on the back of the Copic. I'll show you because you'll see it one day, but why not just talk about it today? Uh, one of the ideas I had, and I had written it down in my journal right next to the piece on the back of the Copic marker, uh, whatever day this was, this Copic marker where I stamped them out and then drew on top, that it had bled through. Uh, and I put a piece of cardboard underneath the paper so it didn't go on to the next day, but it was on the same sheet of paper, you could totally see through it. So it was like having a double image. And I put a note here that says paint over with transparent matte paint. <laughs> Why didn't I just say matte medium? <laughs> transparent matte paint. Okay. Maybe I, I was going to do it in a color. I'm not quite sure. And redraw over the top. So I was going to use what I could kind of softly see through to just create another piece on the back. It would essentially be a, a flipped or like a mirror image. And then what I ended up doing was grabbing some tracing paper because I didn't want to bother with the matte medium. And I also felt like the matte medium was going to warp the paper a ton. So I, I did a tracing paper and I used a glue stick just to glue the whole thing over the top. Glue sticks don't have as much water content in them as liquid glue. So even though it did bubble the transparent paper a little bit, it didn't really warp the paper that I stuck it onto. And then on top of that, I started redrawing over the piece. And so you could kind of see 
a very faint view of what was happening underneath. And now I think it looks so cool. Anyway, here it is. This is what I did. You might need to get a better look at it when I flip through it, you know, at the end. But that's on the back of the... Look, I'm trying to get in and out of this, <laughs> this view. That's on the back of that Copic marker page. And what I really thought was fun is that the big vines, the big seaweed adornment that they have on the other page actually looks like tattoos on here. But I completely redid their faces, a different style. I redid their hair. I kind of colored over the top with pencils to give it a bit more of a different effect. I used a gold. You can kind of see the gold there shimmering on that one. It was just really fun. I really had a good time doing that. And it was one of those moments where I was like, oh, I wish I was filming that because that's a really fun one. But it's not a part of it. It's not one of the days. It's just something I did off camera and that happens. And I still, to this day, I don't feel guilty about it, but sometimes I still do feel a little irritated when I miss moments like that. I don't miss them, but when they're not filmed, because I love to share that stuff with people. I like, it's the most exciting for me to watch these kind of transformation pieces happen. And yeah, you don't get them all on camera. And I could redo it. And I, to an extent, did that for the last day of Mermaid. So you'll see that technique happen again. Uh, but it wasn't quite the same. I didn't do it on the back of the page from Copic Markers. I kind of underpainted it, pasted on top, and then went for it. So you'll see something similar. But, um, you know, it's not a new thing. It's been around for years, people kind of layering like that. But I just, I don't know, I had a really good time doing it. And I felt like I wished I'd captured it on camera. And I've never, like, um, before I had a YouTube channel, like, it never crossed my mind. Like, oh, I wish I had that on camera so I could show somebody. I've only ever really cared about showing the final pieces before. But now I think I get so, uh, it, it, the process is so enjoyable that sometimes I wish I could share more of exactly what about the process. Uh, those moments of gold that I kind of come across sometimes or that feel, like, really exciting to me. I can tell you about it. I just think it's more fun to show you, so... Anyway, that was what I had for that. And this piece was very simple today, so I hope you enjoyed seeing it come to life. I'm going to get back to my errands, back to my stuff. I'm going back to dancing tomorrow. I've switched my schedule around a little bit this week, and I've requested a few days off in June, because June is going to be a very, very busy month. I had fully intended to do my Virtual Voyage 9 in June, but it may end up being July, because I don't think I have a spare moment in June. So... We'll see about that. It's stressing me out a little bit. <laughs> just, so that stress is just for me. But I'm, I'm going to dump it on you just for today. Please help me with my stress. No, don't worry about it. I'll figure it out. But it's not like I don't feel have any time. Maybe I should have done it this month. But I thought being doing a, a monthly, like, everyday challenge for videos would be too much. But I think I was so on top of it before we even started May. I had done, what, like, three weeks of the videos. So... It was a lot less than I thought it would be. The only real challenge for me now is to come and do the voiceovers and then, you know, do the little bit of editing that I do and upload it. But it's so formulaic. Like, it's such a process. It doesn't take that long at all. This voiceover has taken 13 minutes. It'll take me about 20 minutes to do the rest of it. So what, half an hour a day? It's not much, is it? Especially if we've got the whole day off. Probably should have done it now. It wasn't ready now, so I couldn't have done it now. <laughs> Maybe July. Maybe I'll uh, make it coincide with my birthday. Also, things are good to do, do in July for me because it leads into August, which then becomes a bit of a slow season. So I may... Because I was looking at flights to go to well, Japan, but also Australia. <laughs> Realistically, I would go to Australia. So I shouldn't look at the Japan flights. Anyway, they're not as cheap as I thought, but they do get very cheap around end of August, early September. Hmm. We'll see how it all goes. Anyway, have a great day. Bye.